Here is what the heart looks like. I'm actually gonna simplify it for you. I'm gonna draw you a heart like this. Not quite as big as I want, but that'll be okay. We are going to start with it looking like this, and then we will add in the true nature of the heart um, as we go. So this actually works though, to start with the heart like your Valentine's heart. Um, I'm gonna separate this heart into four chambers. The four chambers are going to be the two ventricles and the two atria. The atria are smaller than the ventricles. So these small ones here, here's the left atrium. Atria is plural. Left, wait a minute, what? Um, that's because we are looking at someone and this is their left atrium. So it's opposite of what we are looking at. Here's the right atrium, here's the right ventricle, and here's the left ventricle. In reality, this left ventricle is a bit bigger. It's actually even hard to see on this real image as well. So we can label these th same things here. And then we're gonna have um, vessels going out into circulation. So I want to, in this video, is kind of an overview of the two circulatory tracts. So from the left atrium, first of all, we've got a big old vessel here that's going to go to systemic circulation. This is going to go to all the tissues of the body. Here, there's gonna be capillaries, and then we're gonna lose our oxygen. So the red here is oxygenated blood and the blue is going to be deoxygenated. Now I'm not gonna name all these vessels right now. Um, we're going to later. So aorta, can't help it. That's the big vessel that comes out of here. What right now, what I want you to know is that this is our um, systemic, I did not spell that right, systemic artery. So what are these? This is our systemic capillaries. And when blood loses its oxygen, picks up carbon dioxide, we make it turn blue. It's gonna enter back in to the right atrium. This would be a capillary, kind of looks like that. Obviously at this point, the detail of what a capillary looks like is not the point. This here is a systemic vein Veins return blood to the heart, always. We are then gonna have that blood travel through here. There's going to be a valve that we'll talk about. And this blood still has no oxygen in it, little oxygen. It's going to travel from the right ventricle to where? Well, through pulmonary circulation so that means it's going to the lungs. And that makes sense because we have to pick up oxygen in order to function and leave our carbon dioxide behind. So I'm just gonna write in here lungs. And at the lungs, what happens to our blood? It picks up oxygen, so it becomes red again, and it's going to enter which chamber? I'm just gonna draw this like kind of wrapping around here, our left atrium. Blood enters the atria and exits the ventricles. It's also actually gonna have four different entryways. Um, we don't care about that right now. Let's label these things. This blood right here, this, I told you veins always go towards the heart. 
So this is a pulmonary vein. Do pulmonary veins have high levels of oxygen? Yes. So that's that exception to arteries aren't always oxygenated, veins aren't always deoxygenated. It's where it's going relative to the heart. Um, I'm sorry, whether it's picked up oxygen or not. So this vessel right here, this is our pulmonary, what? Artery. Arteries are always exiting the heart, even if they don't have oxygen. Okay, beautiful picture, right? Um, and you could see that over here as well. So this is our, what, pulmonary artery right here. It has a branch, it's actually called the trunk. Um, here is our aorta that's going to the whole body. What are these things? These are the pulmonary veins coming from the lungs and carrying oxygenated blood to the heart. So left ventricle, ventricles all go out, atria all receive blood, arteries all, that means they all are vessels that come from the ventricles. And then we've got systemic and pulmonary circulatory systems. So in reality, the heart's a pump, I told you, it's two pumps, right? Here's pump one and here's pump two. Doesn't matter which one you call one and two. The whole thing has to work as a circuit. So this next image here um, is the same thing I just drew, right? But a picture that's a little nicer. And this is also showing you the two pumps. So first, let's make sure this anatomy makes sense. Um, blood, it's, we had to start somewhere, right? Let's say we start from um, the lungs. We've got oxygenated blood. I'm gonna do that in black just so it's not confusing. Oxygenated blood coming from the lungs, entering the left atrium, enters the left ventricle, and is pumped out this systemic artery, goes to circulation to exchange with the tissues of the body, becomes deoxygenated in the process, picks up carbon dioxide, and travels back to the heart through the systemic veins and into the right atria. Right atria to left ventricle, out the um, valve that's there that we'll talk about. Now we're in the pulmonary artery. We go pick up oxygen again. And so pulmonary cir circuit or circulation, systemic circuit that make up two separate but connected circuits, both um, pressurized by separate pumps. The pumps are muscular tissue. The left ventricle is higher pressure. Why? It has to pump blood to the entire body, including the head, which is above the heart. And the left right ventricle only has to pump blood to the lungs, which is very nearby the heart. So there's gonna be different amounts of actual muscle tissue on those two sides that create different amounts of force and different amounts of pressure. So we'll come back to that. One little bit of comparative anatomy that I like to stick in here um, is this idea of two pumps. Again, not every organism has this. So this is what I just showed you, right? This is what humans have as well. These two separate pumps. Um, goldfish, actually, many fish don't have that same setup. They've got a single atria that fills that feeds into a single ventricle that then is pumped first to the, the gill capillaries where the where gas exchange occurs, similar to the lungs in humans. Then it goes on to the tissues. So the con of this is in, in humans, we're basically increasing pressure at this point right here. After we get oxygen, it goes back to the heart and it's pumped out fresh again. This is going to result in a lower pressure system. Um, 
that is not able to work quite as efficiently. And in a larger organism, you're gonna need something different. So this can work in smaller organisms such as fish. One other thing, um, just wanna define this, this, this term also um, that I wanna be able to use is remember veins are always leaving the heart. I'm sorry, entering the heart. Here's a vein, entering the heart, here's a vein. Another term for veins are efferent. Ah, I'm sorry. Efferent, same as the nervous system, right? They are um, coming towards the center. Arteries, which are leaving the heart. Another term for this is efferent, exiting. So arteries are always efferent, but are not always oxygenated. Make that into a tongue poster. And that leads us into our first learning check for this week. So first um, answer these three questions. 